Don't use boiling water to make green tea. We'll show you what to do instead. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the ideal temperature for different types of green teas and why using boiling water, as so many people do, can produce an extremely bitter cup of tea. So why does brewing temperature matter? Except for the case of matcha, which is a powdered green tea mixed directly into water, tea is an extraction. This means that the components inside the drink depend on what's extracted from the tea leaves. This means that following the brewing time, temperature, leaf to water ratio, etc. is like following a type of recipe, determining what types of ingredients are included in your final drink. So what are the ingredients inside a typical cup of tea? First, we have the polyphenols. Polyphenols are the natural compounds in the tea plant that give the drink a lot of its trademark flavor. The term polyphenols include smaller subgroups of flavonoids, phenolic acids, and tannins. The largest subgroup of the polyphenols are the flavonoids. The astringent flavors you get from a tea are likely because of the presence of these flavonoids. It's believed that flavonoids are the chemicals produced by a tea plant in order to defend itself against insects, bacteria, and fungus. Teas higher in polyphenols are going to be the unshaded sencha teas. You can identify these teas because they will have less of this sweet flavor and more of this grassy, astringent, or citrusy flavor. Black teas will also be significantly lower in polyphenols because during the oxidation process, the plant converts these polyphenols into theoflavins. In addition to having polyphenols, green tea also contains antioxidants. One of the more talked about properties of the chemical composition of green tea is EGCG. EGCG, or epigallocatechin galli, is one of the most important catechins in green tea. It's thought to have strong antioxidant effects on the body, as it protects it from free radical damage. When researchers study the effects of green teas, EGCG is one of the chemicals they examine. Catechins and polyphenols can both be responsible for the more bitter flavors of a green tea, and they are extracted at a higher temperature. This is why we recommend brewing with lower temperature water and not boiling water. When you use this lower temperature brewing method, you still release plenty of the amino acids in the tea leaves, which are what give tea its sweet and savory flavor. For example, a high theanine tea like Gyokuro should be prepared with 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius water and a brewing time of two minutes. This produces a rich, sweet and savory tea without producing much bitterness. Theanine is also thought to be responsible for the reported calm alert feeling that tea is famous for. It's thought to increase alpha brainwave activity, leading to a greater sense of relaxation and a way to decrease mental and physical stress. This is why a lot of green tea lovers report drinking a nice cup of gyokuro tea during long periods of work and study. It is quite high in caffeine, but it's also high in theanine, which can balance out a lot of the negative side effects of caffeine, like that jittery feeling or the crash that comes later on in the day. Speaking of caffeine, this is an example of a compound in tea that is more difficult to extract. The hotter the water and the longer the brewing time, the more caffeine will be in your cup of tea. This is why cold brewed teas, unless they've been brewed for many hours, tend to be lower in caffeine than hot brewed teas. They also tend to be smoother and sweeter in flavor. This is because less catechins are extracted and therefore less bitterness. But what if I like bitterness in my tea? This is a question we often get asked, and while a slight amount of bitterness in a tea is a nice way to sharpen up the flavor profiles, it can quickly overpower the cup of tea so that you don't taste anything else. A good cup of green tea has this diverse array of flavor profiles. A little bit of sweetness, a slight steamed vegetable note, a tiny bit of this citrusy astringency, and a small amount of bitterness. This complexity creates an engaging drinking experience, and it's the main thing that separates high-quality teas from low-quality teas. While you can't turn bad leaves into good tea, you can turn good leaves into bad tea if you don't brew them properly. Even the best teas will become overwhelmingly bitter if you brew them improperly, so make sure you follow the brewing instructions so that you get the most out of your tea leaves. So that being said, what are the best temperatures to brew different types of green teas? Some teas are more sensitive to temperature than others. For example, the older leaves and stems of the tea plant are tougher and can withstand higher temperatures without becoming too bitter. This means that teas made from older leaves like bancha and genmaicha can take higher temperatures, and teas made from stems like kukicha can as well. We recommend a temperature of 175 degrees Fahrenheit or 80 degrees Celsius for these types of teas. What about roasted teas like hojicha? During the roasting process, the tea loses a lot of its catechins and polyphenols. This is why the flavor of hojicha doesn't have this typical vegetable flavor profile you would find in a normal Japanese green tea like sencha. This tea can also stand up to higher temperatures of 175 degrees and beyond. You still shouldn't boil it, but you can experiment a bit with the temperature without ending up with a completely bitter flavor. A typical sencha tea can be prepared at a temperature of 160 degrees Fahrenheit or 70 degrees Celsius. 
This is a tea made from the younger leaves of the tea plant, so it is a bit sensitive to temperature, but using a slightly hotter brewing temperature like this will bring out a bit more of that citrusy flavor profile that a lot of people are looking for in a sencha. When it comes to shaded teas like Gyokuro, Kabuse Sencha, and Shaded Sencha, you will want to go a little bit lower with the temperature. This is because these teas are meant to be a celebration of these sweet and savory flavors. When you use a temperature of 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius, you end up with a smooth and sweet extraction that is a real treat to drink. If you like these sweeter flavors in a green tea, we would definitely recommend going for a shaded tea and preparing it with a lower temperature like this. So hopefully now you'll think twice before boiling your green tea. It seems like a lot of work, but if you follow the brewing parameters, you'll notice a difference in the taste of your tea right away. Thank you all so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you would like to support our channel, we would really appreciate it if you could try some of our green teas at neoteas.com and let us know what you think. After traveling around Japan for the past few years, we've met with dozens of different farmers and sampled hundreds of different types of teas. We've ultimately decided on a small handful of our favorites, and we'd like to share them with all of you. Another way to support this channel is by liking this video and subscribing to see more videos in the future. If you have any questions about brewing tea or green tea in general, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Until then, we'll see you next time.